Oh, God. I've spent so much time talking about it that I might as well just get on with an actual review for this <laughs> cock-sucking movie. So I guess I got the opportunity to go to a critic screening. Yeah, the critics for the Super Mario Bros. Super Movie. Yay. Which I basically saw just so I could fucking talk about on this goddamn podcast. Don't say that I don't suffer for my art. So this... This film, that I think I mentioned that I'm more interested in the existence of this film rather than actually watching it, like the production of it, it existing, <laughs> it's just, it's just what, uh, what interests me so much, but, so yeah, I really did, I really did see it, I really did see it the other night and, uh, last night, and it is kind of what you would expect it to be if you have very, like, realistic, te- uh, expectations like if you think like okay it's a mario movie it's gonna be shit (laughs) maybe not too bad that's kind of how it is that's basically how it is bro that's how and that's it's just i don't think there's anything too terrible about it i don't think there's anything too offensive or bad but there is certainly nothing amazing about it or even good (laughs) at all it's like cut off at the top and the bottom it's just straight up mediocre right in the middle oh jesus i mean if you were thinking like oh man oh we're gonna have a <laughs> mario movie without mario doing the bloody voices the it's a me what you not gonna have that for mario and luigi are you well no i guess yeah they didn't and everyone was mad and they're like how can you but watching the movie, as, the, as they're going... Like, you know, Mario and Luigi they talk a lot in the movie. So you do kind of start to think, okay, this would be annoying. It feels just, oh, oh, Luigi, we're going to get Luigi. Oh, Luigi, where is he? Princess Peach, oh, but Luigi. All that kind of crap. It would be, yeah. It would have been a bit much. Uh, I guess the voice actor that usually does Mario, um, who's always vo- voiced Mario in the games, uh, has a cameo. Voices his parents or something? I don't know gives a fuck it's just another one of those goddamn easter eggs you know there's just so many like fuck fucking hell man all the cock sucking <laughs> even i was looking for him like towards the end of the movie like he's in brook like mario and luigi are in brooklyn like that's they're part of the real world they're part of the real world and then they like find a magical pipe you know and then they go through it and they end up in the mushroom kingdom where it's like wow it's there's toads that talk and Oh, big Bowser and whatever, and they're not like, holy shit, what the fuck, like, this is really wacky, oh my god, we're in a new fantasy world, this is crazy, I'm gonna have a heart attack. It's not like that, they're just like, oh, mamma mia, huh? Um, and then they just have to get on with it, and they do. And even when all that Mushroom Kingdom shit, like Bowser, spoilers, Bowser comes, like, out of the Mushroom Kingdom into the Brooklyn world... It's, it still shows, like, a whole, the, all the people, like, the Brooklynites, and they're just like, wow, Mario, Luigi, you saved the day, and they don't care about, I don't know, just Bowser and all this destruction going on and probably casualties <laughs> of pedestrians and all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, they, they don't give a crap, so it's like, what, whatever. Like, who, who cares? <laughs> who gives a shit about this fucking movie? Um... Where do I even be- begin exactly? I mean, there's one, sh- there's a shot like when Princess Peach, like you first see her and she's like, oh, Mario, <laughs> whatever. We must stop the, uh, sh- she walks down these steps and then there's kind of like a shot of her feet as she's walking down and then the camera backs out and shows her whole body and she starts talking. And I- I'm starting to like, <laughs> whenever I watch kids movies, which is a lot these days, like modern kids movies, I watch them and I think like, where's the bits for the adults <laughs> and literally like you know oh the foot fetishes <laughs> they're gonna want to see this because i saw that and i was like there's there was no reason for that it's like you know in the barbie <laughs> trailer that came out recently people keep going on about like a foot shot and that it's like huh, huh, but you know there's a joke there so that's fine but in this there wasn't it's so gratuitous it's disgusting all these kids are gonna grow up to be interested in feet that's disgusting. <laughs> Bunch of foot fetishists. Get out of here with that shit. No, I don't like that shit. <laughs> but no, no, the problem is is that they're going to be into cartoon foot fetish crap. 
Well, all, all to pl- we all have Super Mario Bros. to blame, or maybe I'm just reading too deep in this. But seriously, like, what was the point of that shot? Otherwise, God, I can't believe I'm, like, really getting into this fucking stupid, stupid-ass film. Uh, it's not as bad as Space Jam, A New Legacy. But, <laughs> but um, similar to that film, well, in, in a way... Okay, I'm going to praise this film and then shit on it again. One of the things about this movie that I kind of saw in the trailer is like, you know, Mario, like, unlike the fucking 1993 version of the Super Mario Brothers adaptation, which was, you know, pretty horrendous and depressing and really just not, not cool, not cool. And really one of the worst films I've ever seen. It's not even funny. (laughs) And fuck, fuck anyone that says that movie's good, you bl- bunch of contrarians. But anyway, this new one, it's kind of more of a direct one-to-one adaptation. And like the Sonic movies it, it turned out to be, uh, it looks like the designs of characters and everything isn't, you know, fucked up <laughs> in that kind of way. Everyone looks like how they should. I guess they don't sound like it, but whatever. Things look pretty Mario-ish, you know? Although actually... As the um, movie goes on, you start getting, like, other games, like, other Nintendo games coming in. Like, there's a bit that looks like um, Donkey Kong Country, uh, what was it called? Not Tropical Freeze. Oh, yeah, Donkey Kong Country Returns. Like, yeah, th- th- there's a bit that kind of looks like that. And then you got, like, the Mario Kart bit with the Rainbow Road. and <laughs> Rainbow Road! <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> and it all, it all looks good, honestly, like. I mean, it's actually edited a bit too fucking much, you know. There's certain shots in the movie where... I think there's literally a shot where Mario is doing his Mario Kart, whatever. And he's driving. And you get a POV shot. And I was like, this is cool. And then it just cuts away after, like, one second. It's like, fucking... Just, just calm down, you know. I wish Christopher Nolan had directed this instead. He would have kept on the shots of Mario more. <laughs> so it does look... Uh, and I guess sound, like some of the... I don't know, themes from the game are in the movie, and it's like, how they're playing the mo- <laughs> movie. Mo- <laughs> I'm choking on their popcorn and Maltesers. Um, so there is some faithfulness. And one, of the, and one of the things that I saw from the trailer is like, you know, the Mario game going way back, I mean, it was the. F- I, I don't know if it was, I don't think it was the first platform game. Wasn't that like Game & Watch? Fuck, I remember playing that shit. When- God damn, I had like a little. You know, in the 90s, they had, like, Game & Watch, and you just have them on, like, a really small little system, and you just play it. Yeah. I wanted them. And then you start getting them in kids' meals at Hungry Jacks and shit. Yeah, that was cool, man. The 90s, yeah. The 90s were cool. Because <laughs> I was a kid. Um, what the fuck was I saying? Uh, yeah, so it's... But it was one of the pioneer, pioneer, pyromaniac, pioneering... Pioneering. Pioneering. I can't talk. I'm too excited about Mario. One of the pioneering ga- uh, platform games uh, and really popularized uh, platform games. So, even watching the trailer, you see platforms in the, in the trailer and it's in the movie and it's like, alright. But, I mean, yeah, so there's a bit where Peach... Like, Mario goes to Peach, he's like, oh, mamma mia, uh, I mean, uh, gabagoo, I gotta, uh, Mario and Luigi legit sound like they're, like, Sopranos guest characters, where, like, the Sopranos, or Tony has to go to Brooklyn, deal with the fucking Mario Bros, Super Mario Bros. So Mario, uh, he's talking to Peach, and he's like, oh, I gotta get Luigi away from, um, Bowser, because Bowser captured him, and, and Peach is like, oh, you're gonna have to prove your worth by doing this platform and then she just brings up a platform and it kind of looks like super mario sunshine kind of thing where you just have like a bunch of platforms over like an ocean and if you fall you fucking fall and you got to start all all over again which is why i hated that cunt game (laughs) i never liked sunshine and i didn't like 64 that much Uh, sue me i'm more into you are mr gay (laughs) and, and the sequel but um yeah, anyway, so you have that, and Mario's like, oh, and you got, like, bullet bills and the uh, flower things and the this and that and hitting, you know, all that shit, you know? So that comes up, and you're watching it, and you're like, Mario keeps going through it, trying to, like, beat this test that he has to do for Peach. So it's like, okay, that's cool that you, you do have platformy thing in 
movie <laughs> the adaptation of a platform game like okay that's it's admirable but it doesn't work because again it's just like a waste of time because peach is just like oh you want to continue on with this story with this narrative and mario's like yes i'm very pressed for time my brother's gonna die at any minute you could be dead now like fucking let's get on with it already she's like mm. Maybe you need it. Maybe help me out. With... And she's got like this, yeah, uh, platform thing that he has to go through, and then he doesn't even do it, and it just like takes up hours of time, not in the in the within the movie universe. But it is a waste of time in the movie because you're just like, Ugh, can you just integrate the platformy thing better? You know, in the in the fucking story, you know, because it just seems, yeah, not convincing and it doesn't gel well you know um i mean there is a bit early on in the movie where they need to get to the fucking uh um someone's ha they're back in brooklyn and they got to get to someone's house to do plumbing work and they got to like go through roadworks and you see like a literal i guess 2d perspective of them running through and that whole bit is like <laughs> maybe the best scene in the movie <laughs> i guess because <laughs> you're like ah -ha, it's like platformy it's integrated into the story like oh mario and luigi they gotta get to the fucking thing on time um and it's a bit shoehorned but it's fine enough but this other one is just it's just a test she's just like you you have to test and then after that they go to donkey kong and cranky kong and then they're both like oh you gotta do another test we gotta you know throw down in the coliseum and again it's like it shows platformy things like mario eats like a mushroom that makes him tiny it's like ha ha and then he eats one that makes him a furry, <laughs> you know, all that kind of thing. And it's like, okay, that's cool. It's like, it's like the game. But again, it's, I'm still watching a scene in the context. It's a waste of time. And I could even hear kids in the audience being like, oh, it's a waste of time. Well, it's not integrated in the story. Oh, they have a, you know, a separation of a story and theme and action. It's not married together very well. Not at all. Some of the kids were getting pretty irate in the... But all the adults are like, shut up kids, I'm trying to watch Super Mario, we're waiting, waiting 30 years for this, <laughs> Mario! <laughs> I mean, that's legit how it is. Um... <laughs> yeah, yeah, so that's my complaint, that it doesn't, yeah, like, you're kind of just watching, and then again, uh, what the fuck happened, like, what's, oh god, I don't even know, but then they're fucking doing Mario Kart, um, yeah, <laughs> they're doing a Mario Kart, and then uh, for, they're trying to get away from Bowser and his Coopers, you know, and the Coopers are coming after them or whatever. Uh, yeah, you know, not a bad sequence. Um, but then <laughs> it's all, again, I guess it's uh, one of the better sequences in the movie. And like I was saying, like Rainbow Road does, like it comes up and it does look cool. It's, it's pretty neat. Again, you know, just. I need to edit it so goddamn much, but whatever. Um, but then there's like certain things that happen. Like one of the Coopers, his vehicle gets fucked up, and then he's just like, "Oh yeah, well it's blue shell time." And then he turns himself into a blue shell and heads for Mario and Donkey Kong, who are like in a cart. I mean, what they're trying to do is get away. They're not racing, but I guess they're coming first now. And then so the blue shell gets them. And it fucks up the road as well, so the road disappears. And then what happens? They fall to the ocean and get swallowed by a thing. I didn't even recognize that fish that swallows and not what it was like a like a fucking um, oh for fuck's sake what's the, uh, who 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 was in the whale? It wasn't Moby Dick. Who the fuck? Oh. Whatever, I don't give a shit about ancient literature. <laughs> or, or maybe it was only from like the 1400s or 1700s. Who ended up in a whale? Was it Joan of Arc? <laughs> I think it was Fred Flintstone. Or, oh, it was Pinocchio. <laughs> I don't know, whatever. Anyway, they, yeah, they end up in a fucking, who cares? Um, uh, yeah, but it blows up the road. And I'm just like, fuck, man. I... I what? It's like three things that don't make sense. Like the blue shell is just kind of out of nowhere. It's just like blue shell. Ooh, I remember that. Um, and it blows up the road, and they're not even racing. It's just like it's just shit that has to happen just because it has to happen. <gasps> yeah, I mean, I guess like with those kind of free tests in the movie, it kind of just feels like 
free missions, which is strange because you don't like the Mario games for the most part, aren't even based on missions. It's not like you got to do this, this and that. Um, it's kind of just get to the end, you know, but yeah, that's kind of a problem because when you're playing a video game and it gives you a bunch of missions, it's like, okay, cool. But like in a movie, it just feels bloody well tedious. So you're not exactly getting a very good adaptation of a video game. And that's why video game adaptations kind of get all wonky because like, how do you do it? Especially with a video game, even today, that's as pure as Mario, where it is just a game, like, who gives a fuck about story or whatever, it's not some huge sprawling, you know, whatever kind of massive game with a big story, you know, that takes 19 hours to complete, you know, it's just, so having a, like, it, it really feels forceful trying to put this into a movie, and then that's what you're seeing, that's what you're seeing with the end product with, yeah, with, with this movie, this is what it is, um, as I was saying, I don't really respect the movie. It's an admirable attempt at trying to do that. Uh, and, you know, to keep faithful, fine. It's not a fuck up like the uh, the first 1993 one. But, I mean, it's just not a movie. <laughs> it's just... Oh, God. And, you know, like... When, and I was watching this... Like, I was sat next to a kid. <laughs> and, and then this kid was with their mum, who's, I don't know, like 40 years old or whatever. But this mum... Like, fucking every tiny little thing that happened in the movie, she would just clap. Um, and it just makes me think of meme stereotype, where it's like, I saw a thing I recognized in film and I clapped. <sighs> like, at the end, when um, they pla- when they go back to Brooklyn, and then they're in... Well, you see it at the start of the movie as well. They're, like, playing an arcade in the um, in this bar. And I was looking, I could see, like, oh, yeah, ha-ha, they have Jumpman in... Um, and you can even see the original Mario right there. There's various things. I just remember there's a bit where Luigi just has a very... Ra- he has a random flashback. Like, I'm only just remembering this uh, to when he was a kid. And, like, Mario helped him out. And it's just like... All right, cool. <laughs> it's just... All right, yeah. Just just the one flashback there. But um, it shows him looking like baby Mario, you know? Like Paper Mario or something. Oh, I remember... I recognize that... When I saw the thing, I clapped in the audience just in case Shigeru Miyamoto was there and he could point me out and be like, yo, you recognize the thing? Yeah, all right. It's like that meme of um, Leonardo DiCaprio in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood where he points. <laughs> He's like, yo, that's the thing. That's the reference. Except this time it's not you in the film. It's just, oh, jump man in my... Um... And then I did not stick around for any end credits, mid credits, bullshit, whatever. But um, uh, apparently the end credits just shows Yoshi hatching and being like, <laughs> and it's like fuck off. <laughs> and you hear that? I accidentally left it in. Oh no. Uh, yeah, it's just a kind of a lousy movie. But hey, who cares? It's just a movie for dumb kids. Dumb kids. To watch, your stupid kid can watch that. You're not going to let your kid watch Godfather or whatever, you know, or Drive. So just have them watch a stupid movie like Super Mario Bros. I saw a trailer for a kid's movie just before this where... I don't even remember what it's called. Something to do with... Uh, Krakens. <laughs> and just, and the tr- I think I enjoyed that trailer more. It felt more like kid movie with message. And the message seemed fine where it's just don't be a vain cunt. You hear me? Girls, little girls, when you grow up, I don't want to hear any of this. Mm, I'm amazing. Mm, which honestly doesn't even seem like, you know, honestly, a message that you would put in a kid's movie these days. Honestly, people would just be like, nah, man, you know, girls can grow up to be depressed influencers on online. You know, what's wrong with that? You know, it's that they think it's the easiest job in the world. And yet, they're putting their visage out there to be uh, criticized on a daily basis and it's basically still work. Hey, it's good money and easy hours, but still a lot of you to put out there, you know. It's like you are the job. Uh, but yeah, cool. Uh, I don't even know what I'm talking about. And then there was like a tra- the old trailer for the stupid Barbie movie, which I'm really not looking forward to. And I, I guess I won't watch it. Fuck that. <laughs> but, uh, but, um... Like, that first trailer that they had where it riffed on 2001, I'm just like, 
What the fuck? Like, what are you doing? I mean, I think the new trailer looks worse. It just seems just... Like... I don't know. Honestly, this movie's going to come out, and I probably will end up goddamn watching it <laughs> at its critic screening, and then they're talking about it on a fucking podcast again. But yeah, honestly, I just every time I think about that movie, I think about that Barbie song, you know, um, and it's you know kind of a banger, uh, and and I think about the video clip for that, and it's just like yeah, that whole thing is probably better than this movie, but like, what the fuck? <laughs> I don't know. It's just it's. It's, I'm very interested by like corporate movies like this where it's just like this is a product this is part this is like ancillary like it's like sometimes you have a film and then you have toys as the ancillary market but this time it's like the toys are first or the video game is first and the movie is basically surrounding it you know and some movies end up turning into that like cars or some Pixar shit where it's like, oh, we we got to make a Cars 4. And they will make a Cars 4 because I believe if the... Well, they're fucking... I mean, look at Pixar. All they're fucking well doing is making sequels, it seems. I mean, not all the time, but they're like, hey, let's make a Soul 4 or whatever. Yeah, that's kind of what these f- films feel like, that they're commercials. And I'm just interested in it. I'm just so interested in films that are like that, where they got to advertise something like Super Mario... Uh, um, fuck yeah, but a Barbie. Uh, what else? Oppenheimer. <laughs> you gotta you gotta sell those <laughs> Oppenheimer <laughs> figurines. They, if it, you know what, they might as well because all these Nolan fanboys would buy them. They'd lap them up. Oh, I'm gonna buy, spend fifty five dollars and sixty five on postage to buy the, oh, keep it in mint condition. <laughs> they really will. They'll do it. Well, I guess they won't. Um. Christ, is there anything else I can say about this bullshit? Yeah, that's really all I got to say. I mean, it is kind of what you expect. I mean, it's nothing too terrible. Um, decently funny. Uh, yeah, the humor isn't too bad. I think my favorite joke is like Mario and Donkey Kong. Oh, I forgot to say, <laughs> so many of the themes in the movie are just stupid. Like Mario feels like his dad's disappointed in him because he made like a shitty commercial for his plumbing business or whatever. And it's like, well, what? Who cares? <laughs> Did he? But it's like, oh god, whatever. Like, what? What does this have to do? Like, it's just book ended. It's just like at the start of the film and at the end, his dad's like, "Oh, I'm proud of you, my son. <laughs> are you winning?" And Mario's like, "Yeah, dad, I'm winning. I'm winning." It fades to black. Uh, but yeah, it's not a big thing. And like, it would have been better just to have more of a thing about Mario taking care of Luigi. I don't know. Who gives a fuck? Whatever. Um, uh, uh, yeah, anyway, uh, the joke uh, between... So Mario and Donkey Kong uh, also have like a rift between each other. They need to become friends, which they do by saving each other's lives. Oh, I've seen this a bunch of million motherfucking times but um they're on like kind of shaky ground even though mario beat donkey kong in a thing and then they have to like do the mario kart and just before they start like donkey kong leans towards mario and just goes i hate you <laughs> that was my favorite joke in the movie and i also like that little blue star it was really depressing some of the jokes like there's one joke where mario is in slow-mo and he goes Mia, and that happened twice and yeah that's my thoughts on the film um you know like humor and action and excitement and character and theme and story all the things that kind of make up a movie i felt like this movie had they were present <laughs> mostly the humor uh but it was barely serviceable and nothing too shit but uh you know Never too great, even. Nah, what, whatever. Just yeah, really in the middle. Who gives a fuck? Oh Christ, they're gonna make a bunch of like other. I think like someone compared this to the Lego Movie, and I just went, oh fuck, man, what a like a, 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 a chasm in quality. Like the Lego Movie, I remember that shit coming out and people being like, dude, this movie's fucking great. 
it's like oh a little bit meta textual or whatever and i was like oh yeah it is that's cool <laughs> i mean i kind of dug it i thought the lego movie had a satirical a- element i dig the song in it everything is awesome like the first 30 minutes of that movie i really liked it's still kind of cool as it went on and then it, it kind of opened up at the end and showing like uh telling man children to back the fuck off <laughs> basically yeah that was a cool movie it's just like obviously and that's another fucking movie that's like a commercial for it's the thing you know and it did it well and i even watched the lego batman movie and i was like this shit's cool as well really kind of funny just a funny batman movie you know cool watch lego animation or whatever i didn't watch the second one or the ninjago movie why does ninjago sound like a slur uh, anyway <laughs> uh but yeah i think those movies started to tank and they're like oh man i thought we did well with the first one but whatever um but yeah, I guess I'll make a bunch of other Mario movies if this one does well. I guess it will. I mean, obviously they're already like, oh, gotta like, oh, we're gonna have a Yoshi movie, oh, a Donkey Kong movie, oh, a Princess Peach movie, and, a, and all that crap. Um, oh, we wanna see a Shy Guy movie. Oh, I know the movie everyone wants to watch, Luigi's Mansion. <laughs> mm. Right. Yep. You can have your bloody Luigi's Mansion movie. Make two hundred million at the box office. Oh fuck. Made way less than <laughs> we really needed it to. Um, yeah, was I saying something? Anyway, I don't know. It probably won't make money. Or maybe it will. Who gives a fuck? I'm interested to know. Because <laughs> I'm stupid. I'm, I'm wasting my time. What am I doing with my life? Watching Super Mario Brothers movie. Watching the trailers for them. Talking about them on this. Then watching the movie. Doing a review for it. Doing a, like a written review. Then a, this review. Uh, and... Looking like, oh, how much money is it making? God, I'm so bored. I need a girlfriend. <laughs> um, if I had one, she'd probably be like, why are you <laughs> um, Should I just... Like, talk, talk... Speaking of a movie that's actually good, I don't know. I don't have much to say about John Wick 4, but that kind of just... I have nothing to say about it. It's cool. Yeah, so that's my review of that. So on to... Um, <laughs> I feel I, I think it's diminishing returns with the John Wick series, so I would like to take a bit of a break from the series because the first like forty minutes of that movie, like there's a bunch of like building story up and then the first action scene, I was not impressed. I was like, oh god, I'm, I'm I'm sick of John Wick now. Like he's just shooting people in the head, and like I've seen it for three fucking movies. Like I kind of don't need it anymore. Uh, but then it started getting good. Like when once he gets to the uh, Berlin, or once he's told that he has to go to Berlin, it's like when the movie kind of starts, really, and then the action scenes just get better and better and better. Like once he gets to the staircase, it's fucking, it's really great. Actually, nah, it's not really great. <laughs> it's pretty cool. I shouldn't say it. I'm not. I wasn't like jerking off in the cinema about it, but I was like, oh, this is cool, and I like the gun thing with the flaming shotgun. But you know, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, cool movie. Uh, so anyway, on to my. Now onto a movie where I don't even know... Well, I know how I think about it. This is random, but, like, I watched... So, I recently re-watched uh, House on the Edge of the Park. <laughs> uh, you know. So, yeah. Uh, random kind of exploitation. Uh, grindhouse. Home invasion. Horrors. Uh, terror. <laughs> flick. Yeah, terror, you know. Like, I like to think... Like, it's not really horror. It's kind of more terror. As, and I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of the good old home invasion genre. <laughs> but this one right here... I watched this, like, quite a few... A number of years ago. Maybe six or whatever years ago. And I remember just being like, man, like, I like it. At, the film at its core is cool. It's a nasty... Just a nasty, like you know, home invasion film with these guys are fucking up the people in this house and they're like, oh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's kind of like that. And <sighs> yeah, I guess to the, to its core, that's what it is. You know what it, it knows what it is. There's some pretty good direction here and there that just, yeah, sometimes as you're watching it, you just feel like, oh God, it's so scummy just to watch it. David Hess plays the main baddie and he does do a good job. He is like, you watch him and you just go, oh man. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he's good. He's he's really something. So there is like a real griminess and nastiness to the film, and you know you got to respect it <laughs> and admire it that it is uh, what it is. 
Um, that's how I felt about it when it came out. But I also had some issues. I had a lot of issues with it. And I just thought, ugh, there's just something. Well, there's a bunch of things about it. But I still felt like, oh, it's pretty good. And I even, like, wanted to make do a remake of it. No, oh, just film it tomorrow. Um, like, I had I- an idea for a remake, which is such a fucking great idea. Oh, what a fucking great idea that I had <laughs> for the remake. Oh, but... <laughs> uh, but- but I wanted to do a remake because it's like the film works at its core, but there's just all these scenes that are like really dragging it down. And rewatching it, I'm just like, holy fuck. Like, I was thinking as I was watching it, like, I need to like torrent like a HD rip of this and then just edit out the scenes that I don't like. And that's kind of going to bring it down to like half a movie. Like,. I'm trying to think, like, it seems like every... Because s- as I was watching it recently, it's like every second sequence of just like, ugh, oh, I hate this. Oh, it's so cringy. And then the next sequence is just like, oh, we're getting into the, you know, oh, the 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 grotty, nasty, you know, the way that they're fucking with these people. Um, okay, where... Should I start from the start? So here's the story. So, like, these two bad guys... Um, one of them rapes a woman. That's kind of how the movie opens. So you look at it and you're like, oh, this guy's an asshole. Got this like opening song. And the whole opening's great. The opening song's nice. It's kind of like cheesy, I guess. Like where it's like, Ugh, childlike singing, ha ha contrast with the nastiness. But ah, it's, it's nice. And it's got a, it's kind of used as a theme throughout the movie. So that's fine. Um, then these two guys work as a like mechanic. These, this couple drives in. They look like very uppity couple kind of young couple um and they try to get their car fixed and they do and the the two mechanics there they're kind of like pushing to like oh you got a party huh well where's our invite and the guy's just like ah well you helped us out all right you can come with us <laughs> i guess it doesn't take too much convincing but whatever it's the late 70s <laughs> so they go to the uh, house they're having a party and it's kind of like, oh, I guess the people are very... It's, it's not really a party, as they say. They're like, it's more of a gathering. But, the, yeah, these two guys come in and start, I don't know, kind of taking over this gathering for themselves. Um, and I guess, like, oh, okay. I guess they're letting them in. They don't think they're that creepy. Fair enough. They're not doing anything creepy just yet. Uh, I guess there's, like, a scene where the other guy... I fucking hate the other villain in this movie. I fucking hate him. He, but maybe there's something interesting with him. I don't know. First of all, he looks like Trey Parker. <laughs> his acting's terrible. He just doesn't get into it. But maybe there's something with his character where he doesn't want to be a brutish kind of guy. He's actually like, oh, I'm kind of just caught up in it. Ugh. There's an attempt at that in the movie, but the movie just doesn't really go all the way f- through with it. Like it doesn't with a whole bunch of other things, or maybe it just doesn't care. <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of fucked up, and I'll get round to it. But anyway, uh, there's a scene where he's like stripping for everyone, and everyone's cheering him on. It's not a well done scene. I'll let it slide. I'll let that scene slide because there's something interesting there where David Hess villain. He's like, you know, "What are you doing? Why are you doing this? You know, you're big. You're embarrassing me. You're making a fool of yourself. You know, that's kind of cool, I guess. Kind of brings some tension. I just don't like the way." I- it's done in the film. It's kind of just bad direction. Then they both start getting pissed off for some reason. And then... Well, I don't remember why exactly. I guess they're just like, eh, fuck is... Uh, so they beat up one of the guys, tie him to, like, underneath the table. They beat up another guy. They start threatening everyone. Um, oh, yeah, but then one of the women... Before this, one of the women's, like, flirting with him. Like, she's like you can come take a shower with me or something, but then she's playing hard to get. And that's like another thing where it's like, okay, the film seems to be going with, like, she's like a weird kind of woman where she, she's <laughs> playing a dangerous game, I guess, where it, it's, it is almost like she wants to be <laughs> maybe raped, <laughs> maybe soft raped. And that's fine. I'm fine. That's perf- That's like a really good thing to bring into an exploitation film. Um, but the problem is, is, is this film is like way, leans into the exploitation way too heavily where you're kind of just watching scenes of her like getting naked and everything. And you're like, it's, it's, 
interrupting the film. It's just not quite gelling, you know. It's not quite getting there. I don't know. I don't know. I, again, I'll let it slide. Maybe it just needs better writing from me when I work on the remake, <laughs> which I'm writing as well. I'm writing and directing. And playing the David Hess character. All right, I kind of forgot, but like, the, yeah, he, he starts, shit starts uh, getting <laughs> heated when um, they, the villains realize the other people are like cheating at poker and that's when they start having arguments and rapes start occurring. Uh, but the problem is, so this other guy, this other villain, he's got a thing for like one of the women there and one of the women tries escaping and he stops her. And then, man, this is where shit just... <laughs> Oh God, go south! But like, he tells her like, "I don't want to be doing this. I'm just, I'm not like him. I'm not like the other guys. I don't want to rape or kill you or whatever." You would think at this point she'd be like, "Well, if that's how you really feel, then you know, me and you, we gotta get out of here. We gotta call the cops. We gotta like do something about this. He's that guy's crazy. He's gonna kill someone. Shit, <laughs> you know. It should be like that." And I remember this the first time I saw this movie. No, no. They have sex. They just get naked right there outside, like in the garden, and just have sex. And then, like, they just come back in a little bit later. And it's like, why? why what the fuck? <laughs> why are you doing this? Like, this is... Like, she's... What the fuck? And what's up with this woman? What's up with these ladies, man? They're, they're weird. But I don't think this woman... Like, this doesn't make sense at all. Like, this woman doesn't appear to have a kind of weird sexual quasi-soft rape fantasy or a real rape fantasy. She le is legit like, fuck this. I need to get out of here. This is terrible. <laughs> and we're, oh, my God. <laughs> and, and then... But then she all of a sudden just starts having sex with this guy and then goes back in the house. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> Call the cops. Ugh, and that's the kind of thing that makes me think like, you know, this is a problem with exploitation films a lot of the time, is that they seem cynical. They seem cynically algorithmic, algorithmically made. Like, you know how people say like, oh, Netflix movies or whatever, like an algorithm, you know, it's like, oh, you got to have this thing here and you got to have this at this beat, you know, it's like, you just keep having the same things at the same beats, you know, you got to have, like, but, but exploitation films are very much like that. They're designed like that. And I don't like... You know, having to be that strict where it's like, oh, you're going to have the sex scene here. You know, it's like disruptive to <laughs> the story, you know. I mean, I'm fine with like having, you know, you got to have tick the boxes, have A, B and C in your movie. But it's like how you mix like that, those ingredients, like you got to use them, but throw them in in a tasteful manner, which this film just doesn't do at all. And it's not like, oh, anti-feminist. <laughs> um, it's, it's just shitty, shitty shitty storytelling and it gets shittier it gets way shittier um and then there's a bit where like this other woman shows up and she doesn't know what's going on and so they bring her into the house and then she starts to be like oh fuck <laughs> there's intruders <laughs> um and then yeah david hess starts like like really fucking with her like st stripping her down cutting off her uh like uh, clothes and just like and then starts like cutting at her and abusing her it is and that whole bit is just genuinely <laughs> you know upsetting to watch uh, hey that's what the film's going for <laughs> that's what i wanted but it's just <laughs> i'm like really watching it being like wow i'm i really am upset <laughs> this is like it isn't just like a goofy like oh or she's like oh maybe i like it oh dumb thing she's just like thoroughly upset at this and she's like completely unhappy um yeah and but this is why this sort of thing goes up against what happens next because like kind of right after that here's what happens i forgot about this i forgot that this happened at the end of the movie so at the end of the movie one of the guys um by the way, just real quickly, like, you get, like, particularly with him, you get certain shots where when he's abusing someone, like, it just cuts to them looking on and just being like, fuck, <laughs> just looking on in horror. Like, again, I know it's just like a nasty exploitation movie, but some of the nastiness is directed well and edited well, like, well, kind of. <laughs> uh, maybe the composition isn't too great, but I, I really do think, yeah, some of it, like, works well and brings you into 
this scenario we like oh fuck <laughs> this is not good for the people involved but anyway spoilers so when david hess he gets like shot um and just before he dies uh one of the guys who, who like took the gun out of like the cabinet to shoot him walks up to him and he says to him he says before he kills him he says this was all planned this was planned because you, my good man, raped my sister and killed her at the beginning of the film. That was my sister. So I somehow knew who the rapist was. I knew where he worked. I found you. I constructed this whole get-together. And then for you to come to the get-together. As, so that I could then try and, I guess, cheat at poker and piss you off. And then have you come at us. And then we could, like, shoot you in self-defense. Like, you got to have the self-defense portion fine. Um, and that's how I was going to kill you. Um, what, a, what a plan. What a very contrived, specific plan that kind of went, went to plan. You goaded him in. You killed him in self-defense. Sure. You know what else happened? All your friends got beaten up. A bunch of your friends got raped. <laughs> like, you got beaten up. Your friend got beaten up. This chick got raped. This other chick didn't. Had consensual sex, it seems. This other chick started getting carved up by a straight razor. Um, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> this is... Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> like, this is what your friends... Top friends you've got. And they don't even seem to care. They're just like, yeah, it's all good. <laughs> um... Jesus Christ, man. What a fucking stupid twist. Why even have this twist? Why even have it? Just to make the film clever? Fuck off. God damn, man. I Sometimes these fucking Italians just... I think it was some of the acting in this movie, like that uh, that, that particular villain. Just some of it is just it's so shitty. It's just so shitty. It's just horrible and it's just so... They're comical, and that's the thing with these exploitation movies. Sometimes they have just, like, really... It's like... I'm thinking, like, Last House on the Left and I Spit in Your Grave. I need to rewatch those movies again, because I remember liking them, but do I? Or am I going to not like them when I see them again? Because I remember both of those movies have... They're both, like, like intense, like, nasty, grimy, just you know, endless rape scenes and whatever, you know, it's just, it's just like horror and terror. And it's just, you know, it is that, you know, um, I guess you could call that exploitation and whatever, but it is just showing just like a stark, horrible reality of rape and sexual abuse and violence and revenge and all that kind of thing, you know, uh, which I think it's all a bit more from what I remember thoughtful in those movies, the notion of revenge is yeah, much more, makes more sense <laughs> and you know a narrative sense than in house on the edge of the park um but i remember that both those movies also have like these horrible moments like they're so like intense and realistic you're like watching like god like a realistic rape scene but then all cut to like like uh like these characters like a, the nerdy character or the police in last house on the left uh, it just shows them being like, ooh, ooh, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> just like, I think even like comical music and they're going, well, I'm Jerry, Jerry Lewis. <laughs> and it's like such a stark tonal head fuck. You're just like, oh, fuck, man. It's like, again, like, I, I think I will literally need to, I should watch the movies again, but I'll, I might need to like, like edit those scenes out because I'm just so fucking sick of them. But I don't know, I probably won't watch these particular movies again too soon. Nah, I think I will. Just as an editing exercise, kind of, just to see how long, like, House on the Edge of the Park. Because I think I would get it down to about an hour. I, I mean, I'm, the movie might not make a whole lot of sense, but, you know, but I can <laughs> get it down. Just cut out the bullshit, man. Yeah, and then that's basically the end of the movie. I mean, it ends fine enough with guy dying in a pool, <laughs> and then. But actually, one of the last the last exchanges of exchanges of dialogue is the dude who 
organized this whole bloody rape revenge. He's like, hey, guys, come on over. You know, I got to get this guy to come on over. He's probably going to fight you. He might rape you, but I'll kind of inch towards the cabinet, grab the gun, and I can shoot him in self-defense because fucking guy raped my sister. Uh, but he's talking to the woman. And I think, she, like, she gets raped, I think. <laughs> raped by him at, like, in the heat of the moment, you know. And the guy says something along the lines of, but didn't you enjoy it? Something like that. And it's like, oh. This whole notion of enjoying rape, it's a hefty theme to put into a movie. I think you gotta, like, just, you know, it, 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 you gotta work on it a bit more. It's like the themes in Super Mario Bros. movie. It's like, you gotta work on them. You gotta spend a bit more time to really, like, have them uh, be embellished and actually do something from the, for the movie. I mean, there's a bit in the Super Mario Brothers movie where Peach gets raped <laughs> by Bowser. But then she's, ooh, but maybe she likes it. It really happens. <laughs> Go ahead and watch the movie for yourself. It's like a nine-minute, <laughs> unedited, <laughs> static shot of her being brutally raped in the ass. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, I should watch that movie again. God, I really should. I uh, yeah, f- fun times. Um, yeah. So that's all I got to say about that movie. Uh, not much of a. Pa- uh, where's a park? That's another problem I had. It's like th- th- the house is certainly there. The house is there for most of the movie. Where's this park? I don't know. You don't really see too many exteriors. And I mean, what does it matter? Like, on the edge of the park. I mean, all right. It's across from the house. It's like, you don't really need... If you did a a reverse shot, like, facing, like, away from the house towards what's across the road, you could do it at a different location. So, whatever. Spooky title, by the way. Ooh, house on the edge of the park. Oh. <laughs> it's like last house on the left is like, ah, oh, that sounds kind of, sounds somewhat morbid. Like, what's going on there? But then it's like house on the edge of the park. <laughs> Who gives a fuck? Speaking of movies, like, I wish that I was directing, like, some new superhero movie or some, yeah, superhero movie. Like, if I was, like, James Gunn working on Guardians of the Galaxy 3 or whatever. If I was working on a movie like that, like, yeah, in particular, Gardens, like, something that's kind of like, eh, a little goofy, you know, <laughs> something like that. I would make it, like, very, you know, regular. It'd just be totally regular. The characters in the film are like, oh, we have to go over there. Oh, that guy's got that guy. We need to get him back or whatever. We need to get Luigi. So it's just a story, theme, character, action, you know, all that. <laughs> um, and then, at, like, at, like, the hour 20 mark, maybe, or, or, I would have, like, a bit where... Like, there would be a bit where, like, one of the characters looks almost into the camera and just says, like, Ah, oh, all these fucking white, straight, cishet men are bloody useless, eh? And then the movie would continue on, like, like that character didn't even say that. It would just continue on. It'd be like, if you took that line out of the movie, the movie would make more sense. Because that kind of thing never gets brought up before or after. There's, like, no identity politics, really, in the film there's no like woo. it's just like you know you know individualist shit it's like that guy is cool i don't like that guy or that girl <laughs> whatever um so it'd be like that there would be you know not a lot of yeah identity politics in the film but there would just be that one bit in the middle there just so that like because if i released if I was to release the movie otherwise, without that bit, people would just watch the movie and be like, ah, whatever, cool, <laughs> cool movie. But if you have just that one little bit there, just that one sentence that means nothing in the movie, you'd just have all these right-wing like uh, publications and YouTubers and commentators being like, oh my god, new superhero movie, woke, shitting on straight white men, what's the problem? <laughs> and then it'd be like, you know... Th- Again, there's no identity politics in the movie, but the main character of the movie is a straight, cishet, white guy, whatever. Um, I, I mean, it's not brought up. It's not inherent to his character. It's just kind of, that's he, that's he, who he is. And there's even a few other heroes and villains that are also like that. You know, The black guy, there's a woman, Latino, whatever. Um... But none of it's like, you know, in the script or in the themes or anything like that. You know, the rest of the movie is about family, you know, and, and, and that kind of crap. 
but yeah you just have like that one bit there um yeah and then yeah you'd have a whole bunch of people just you know losing their shit over just this one line i think it's like the batman kind of had that i think that's kind of where i'm getting it from because that seemed to be a thing like i watched the batman and it's like that there's like a bit in the middle of the movie where she just say hey yo we straight <laughs> white man <laughs> And it's just like, huh? What did she say? Oh, <laughs> she just says that. Um, I swear, like, Batman throws it back in her face or something. I swear, it, didn't this happen in a movie? Where it's like, you just a white man. And then it's like, he uses his whiteness to save the day. <laughs> and then she's like, why are you going to use your whiteness to save the day? And he's like, oh, my God, I can't please you at all. Fuck off, Catwoman. Um, no, I don't know. I, I don't know. And, and, and really, like, that part of the movie where she said that, like, I... I don't think I was really listening. I was kind of like, oh, this bit of a slump in the movie right here. But that's whatever. <laughs> um, but yeah, it just seemed like that. Like the whole rest of the movie, you're like, there's nothing to do with white, black, black, <laughs> Jews, <laughs> Asians, <laughs> um, Australians. Yeah, there's nothing else. It's just, oh, Batman, uh, Riddler's, <laughs> he's getting away with it. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's like, oh, he's an influencer. Look how many Twitch subscribers he has. Mm. Oh, no. <laughs> no, even when it comes... Like, people think, like, oh, there's a bunch of incels and Riddler's an incel and all that kind of thing. But, I mean, that's... Isn't that inferred? Because I don't say incel in the movie. Uh, and they... Riddler's not like, I have not had sex in so long. If I can... <laughs> Riddle me this. When was the last time I had sex? <laughs> Over 12 billion years ago. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Isn't that in the deleted scenes? Anyway, like, yeah, so that doesn't come up. Nothing about... Am I wrong? Because I don't remember this shit. Like, it just seems like a regular movie, and it just had that one bit there. So, yeah. That's kind of where my inspiration came from. But I, I guess a lot of people were like, Oh my god, why the Batman? Why are you going to shit on a white man? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah, no, I do know. Like, Yeah, but it's like, why even bother have that in the movie? But then again, why even get too bothered about a thing in a movie that's like... Yeah, I guess a very specific... Like, very short amount of... It just bothers me, and a lot of fucking YouTuber film critics, reviewers, um, kind of do this sometimes. Like, it's a cinema sins, sins thing to do, you know, where it's just like one like one little second in a film, you're just like, oh, that's kind of weird. To just go on and on about it in your review, being like, oh, that was weird. <laughs> you know, it's just like, man, can you just, man, can you just talk about just the film in general? You can bring that up and being like, oh, that was bullshit. But just... You know, like you are watching a, a, an entire movie. <laughs> You're not watching like one little bit where it's like, oh yeah, it was a weird cut. Yeah, and you go on for twenty minutes about this weird thing or whatever. So that's how it felt. But yeah, I would do that in a movie. I'd just be like, yo, white people, they can all fuck off. <laughs> it's like Jesus, what the fuck? Why do you say that? Where did that come from? And then the rest of the movie is just, oh, it's just back to the movie. And that's what I do to own the conservatives. Anyway, I don't have too much else to say. Oh, God, this is kind of for a while. Um, but it's wild that, like, you know, these days, websites, websites, you know, they have kind of, a lot of them have a monopoly. It seems like it's more than it used to be. I don't know. But, like, you know, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, what have you, YouTube, it's like they all occupy, like, a large, you know, uh, monopolization on website traffic, Right? Am I talking shit? I've seen one graphic that demonstrated this thing before, so I must be right. Um, but yeah, if that's the case, okay, whatever, whoop de do. So you kind of think like those websites would try to be very, um, like, that they would work well, you know? <laughs> I mean, I sh sure as shit, you know, Facebook and YouTube certainly fucking have their problems, especially Facebook, because I've dealt with fucking recently, trying to get shit done. Shit that's making me money. I mean, business money to put back in, really, with, like, uh, the two other entrepreneurs. <laughs> or, what do you call them? Fed Capitalist fat cats, you know, whatever, what if fat pigs, whatever you want to call them. Um, 
But whatever, they're usable and whatever. But I'm tr- I want to. I just want to talk about other websites because you know sometimes you go onto a website and it's like this website's to do with you know like uh, I want I want a recipe. I'm trying to figure something out in a uh, Premiere Pro or you know trying to, I need a tutorial on this thing or that thing. I'm trying to figure out how to do that. You know how do I do a thing <laughs> in life? You know it's got like a step by step guide. I just think it's crazy that a lot of the time when I go to these websites, it's like, oh, I've never been to this website before. I don't even know what it's called, whatever. I'm just trying to read an article. I just think it's fucking wild that, like, these websites, you know, you imagine they don't get a huge amount of traffic or whatever. They're just websites. They're just up there, but hey, they're there to engage. Um, They, but every fucking time I go to one of these websites and I'm, usually I'm scrolling, I'm reading, and I'm like, oh, how do I do this thing? Oh, I need to do that. Oh, and then I, I probably need to like go between the website and Photoshop or whatever. They they always have this pop-ups. They always, I don't mean like pop-up ads, like, you know, I sh- shouldn't be having those sorts of things come up, but like, you know, ads for themselves sort of like, hey, sign up for a newsletter, 20% off, blah, blah, blah. Um, hey, we're on Facebook or whatever. How fucking egregious is that? Why are you shitting on your own service and product? Like, I swear to God, if this sort of thing is going to... If I'm going to re- be reading something, like, I'm in the midst of it, and it comes up with, like, hey, set up for... You. I'm just going to leave that website and just block it and just... Fuck it off. Unbelievable. Imagine Facebook doing the same thing. Like, it... It very rarely does, unless there's like a new feature and it's like, hey, you want to see how to use this? So that doesn't happen. You're on Facebook and you start scrolling down and it's like, oh, by the way, check out the... You know, it's... Like, you know, I don't, I wouldn't say ads or whatever, targeted content counts. Like literally a thing coming up, just interrupting my shit, man. What the fuck are you doing? And a lot of them like, you know, it's always just like... The same thing with fucking food recipes. You're like, oh, how do I make a uh, risotto or whatever? Uh, what are the ingredients? How do I start? It's every fucking, like, the first five million paragraphs, it's just like, risotto was made in the, the town of Rhone, and over the centuries it's evolved into a... I don't need a Wikipedia page on this shit. I have Wikipedia to know what a risotto is, what its history is, and all that kind of crap. Uh, I just want to know how... To make one. How are you telling me how I should make this one? Maybe you can show me some variations, but just, just like start off with an image of what it looks like. It's like, Ooh, Hey, I want that. So th- then I don't think you should tell me like what a risotto is. That's why I'm fucking looking a recipe up. So just go start with the ingredients so I could lay them out on my kitchen table and be like, okay, I got all those and then be like, all right, step one and then go from there. And then, like maybe at the end you could be like, oh, there was going on about it. Oh my lord, man, God, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable that they have like all this shit. You know, sometimes it's like a whole fucking video. Like you know, so, some pop ups come up and they don't get quite in the way, and that's whatever. Fuck off. That's fine. <laughs> Just quickly click out of it, but you can still see what you're trying to look at. But you know, the ones that come up and like shadow out what you're reading it's fucking unbelievable it's fucking unbelievable these websites can just die in a hole and really i want a monopolization on like recipe websites you know tutorial things i want it to be just the one website for like cooking or this thing or that thing like you know just so i can go there and know that i just like see the image and the rest uh ingredients and then how to do it Rather than just all this bullshit, like scrolling down paragraphs, and then because you scroll down, all these pop ups come up that are just. I never, never use them. I never be like, oh, that's cool. Hey, you can get a thing, you know. And it's like, I've never even been to this fucking website before. I've been here for the first time, and you're already giving me shit. Oh, it's so annoying. Why are you doing this? Like, you're shitting on yourself when you're in like a bad position where you're like like barely anyone's using you you're like oh no how do we get more people to use our website how about we have a bunch of pop-up oh shit oh you do not make life easier this has been the david morgan brown experience god damn it's went on 
I keep thinking these things are going to go on for 20 minutes. I mean, I don't mind. Longer, whatever. This is episode. <sighs> Fuck. Um, episode. Shit. Uh, yeah. Episode. <laughs> 72. Yeah. So 72. <laughs> 72. whoop de doo God. I mean, you can go see John Wick 4 if you want. Oh, yeah. I forgot to mention um, with the Super Mario. I... I, I Maybe, I think it was 10 years ago, maybe longer. Like, I, I envisioned in my head a, uh, a Super Mario Bros. Like, live act, a live action adaptation, but it would have, like, a lot of CG kind of shit. So, it would, like, like kind of actually look like the one that just came out, but we're, like, having real people in it. Um, and what I had in mind, which never would have fucking happened, but it was, like, a semi pastiche no i mean i guess it was a, a bit of a pastiche um but even what i had in my head just sounded better where it, um well maybe not but like it would it would have like mario going through like a castle and stomping on goombas and it just yeah show him like going through like a whole level and he gets to the end and he's like wah, wah, whatever but no but mario would talk like um the kind of parody thing about it where it was like mario and luigi are like he's like you know tough guys are like you know luigi's like no mario says to luigi like come on man you gotta get help me out you gotta um help me get the princess luigi's like i can't go back on the streets man smoking he's like not after i killed that kid you didn't mean to kill that kid luigi (laughs) and then like you know he leaves uh later on in the movie he's like in, in a dire situation and all of a sudden like a thing comes down and kills one of the things that it's about to kill him. And he looks up and he's like, Luigi, you son of a bitch. You came. I'm not going to let my brother down again. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it was kind of that. I don't really remember too much of the dialogue other than at the end, the, the movie ends with him defeating Bowser. He opens up the sack, but then the toads come out instead of um, the princess. And they're like, thank you, but our princess is in another castle. And then Mario just goes, son of a bitch. <laughs> it just cuts the credits. <laughs> Rock music plays over the credits. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, so I don't know. It was kind of a sort of a parody of 80s, 90s action films with Super Mario uh, thrown in there. And still being kind of authentic, but that's as... Uh, that's as far as I got with that. Um, but that would have been a cooler movie, man. And I also, back then, I had an idea of, like, a GDA Mario Land. Where it's like, hey, what if GDA teamed up with Nintendo? I told... I would just say that to people, and they'd be like, yo, that's a cool idea. I can't wait for that to happen. I hope they uh, do that idea. <laughs> and then... Um, but, you know, you got to be thinking, like, there's no f- fucking way that would happen. No way. No way, like, uh, but I sure hope it does. But um, then Super Mario Odyssey came out, and then that might have... I mean, <laughs> I was kind of more imagining Mario doing drive-bys, but whatever. Having AKs and that sort of thing. Um, But right, yeah, maybe that looks a bit more like what I was going after. And as I was watching the Super Mario movie, I was thinking like, oh man, like Super Mario Odyssey. Man, I, I never played that. Because they don't have a Switch. Like, man, I should... Uh, how much is a Switch, you know? What is it, like... How much is it? Like, a 250 bucks? <sighs> God damn it. How much? Oh, fuck's sake. I don't want, like, the wacky... Like, neon lighted room. You know. No, it's like $300. It's 400 What? I thought it went down in price. More. All right, whatever. Um, yeah, I might need to borrow <laughs> someone's Switch and play that game real quick. And I also want to play Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze because I really like Donkey Kong Country Returns. I mean, I played that on the Wii. I never got a Wii U, so I might have to borrow someone's Wii U. <sighs> yeah, anyway, I'm going to shut the fuck up now. <laughs>